Ladies and gents, we're two days out from the start of the second test between West Indies and Bangladesh. World Test Championship points are on the line. West Indies are solid in sixth place, but we're pushing. We're pushing for that fifth place. We're trying to catch the Pakistanis. And as a result, this second test is more important than you realise. So let's chop it up and let's get into it. Walk with me. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Yes, yes, as I said at the top, Pakistan are in fifth place in the World Test Championship with a percentage record of 52% or 53% win record. And ours is currently, I believe, 44%. We're right on their heels. Who knows? Could West Indies, by the end of the year, have secured or could we be in a top five place in the World Test Championship? We've never seen the likes of this in a long old while where West Indies can con consider themselves to be a top half test team let's not worry about the the hooks and the crooks of how the world test championship works you've got to beat who's in front of you and we did that in the first test we beat bangladesh uh by seven wickets comprehensive victory if you haven't already done so go watch the review video that i did of the first test between west indians and bangladesh but people were getting at me they were like mash are you going to do a preview video of the second test and I was like, do you know what? I was like, what, what's the point? There's no real point in doing a preview video of the second test. What, what really is going to change? But as the day went on, I thought you've got to give the people what they want. If the streets are calling for it, you've got to deliver. So here I am back in front of the mic, back in the Caribbean Cricket Podcast studios to deliver a quick video. This one should be no longer than 20 to 25 minutes. But how's that? For an intro, I didn't even say my name. If you're new to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, my name is Marshall St. Patrick Cuit, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. And if you are new, let me just go through the admin. Please share the Caribbean Cricket Podcast with your friends and your family. Why is this doing a ticker across the screen? Should I leave that? I might leave that for the whole show, you know. Share the Caribbean Cricket Podcast with your friends and your family, people. Come on, man. Um, the movement is growing. The, the movement is strong. But we can always benefit from more people getting their eyes and their ears on, on, on the product, you know. Um, if you can, uh, support the Caribbean Cricket Podcast at www.patreon.com forward slash Carib Cricket for as little as two pounds, two dollars, two, whatever your currency is. You can become a supporter of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast and keep all of this going. People are asking me about new merch. When am I bringing out new merch? Guess what, people? I've got an idea. It's not going to be the floppy hats. Not yet, because I need to find the distributor. But I've decided we are going to do some snapbacks some snapbacks and kind of trucker hats. Let me know what you feel about that. That's what I'm feeling to do. Some snapbacks and some trucker hats, um, you know, to keep out the sun and that. If you're interested in that, if you think that's a good idea, let me know. But the reason why I say that is because all of this stuff costs money. And that's why I'm saying anybody who wants to support the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, it just makes all of those overheads a bit cheaper um, and lets the merch become a bit more affordable and so on and so forth. It could be quite a way to get this out because, of course, we've got to build up our finances to be able to put the order in for the merch, etc. cetera. Um, speaking of the merch, <laughs> look at this. This is how you know I'm getting slightly more professional, you know. Check this. Here we go. Let me take myself.
sorry, back to myself. <laughs> Back to myself, people. So just some other admin. Obviously, you can follow the Caribbean Cricket Podcast um, on Twitter and on Instagram, uh, at Carib Cricket. You should know that by now. We're also on Facebook. Just search Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Obviously, the website, the one-stop shop for everything, uh, www.caribbeancricketpodcast.com. We updated it again today with all the latest stuff on there. So do visit the website as well. That's basically a synopsis of all of the key admin that you need to know. Actually, I should say something. The latest episodes of the podcast are now out on um, all of the podcast channels. So Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, Podbean, whatever you listen to your podcast on, etc. Episodes 66 and 67 are now out on there, as well as obviously being on the YouTube channel as well. So go take a listen to that. We are recording another episode tomorrow. So that should be out. Well, that's on Thursday. So we're calling another episode tomorrow. So that should be out by the weekend. And that's covering the brand new tournament. The, 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 it's not, I mean, it's T10, but they're calling it 60. The brand new 60 tournament. I'm not going to speak on that today, you know. I'm not going to speak on that. I'm going to leave all of my comments for it, for the episode that we record tomorrow night. But I will leave you with just this one kind of zinger to digest ahead of our recording tomorrow. We, Cricket West Indies, remember during covid had a 20 million debt that they had inherited from uh, dave cameron and his merry chums yes there are valid criticisms to be had of us focusing on um a, a, a kind of fun five-day tournament t10 tournament but listen cricket west indies own the majority share in this tournament if what this tournament leads to is more money coming into the region, which Cricket West Indies can then use to spend around the region in terms of boosting things like um, the facilities within and around the region. I don't see anything wrong with it. But obviously, there's far more deeper questions to be asked about that. But that's my initial kind of zinger for people to just think about. It's a five-day tournament. The way some of you lot are reacting, you'd think that this was some two-and-a-half-month IPL. If you lot are going this mad over a five-day tournament, boy anyways whatever that's for tomorrow we'll focus on that uh at a later date the point of this video is of course to do um the preview of the west Indies versus bangladesh series so the first thing i think that we have to look at and i might share my screen for this getting all technical today listen i'm going to share my screen uh let me see this now of course um anybody who's actually um professional would have thought about doing this beforehand here we go right at this point people you should be able to see my um internet screen i hope you can because i'm not currently on Streamyard. it says that uh you can see this so people what i want you to pay attention to is down the bottom here where it says 2018 to 2021 and what this shows you let me make this a bit bigger what this shows you is the last set of scores um the last set of scores at uh, in St. Lucia. Obviously, the second test is being played in St. Lucia. So you'll remember that we played South Africa in two tests in St. Lucia about basically a year ago, as you can see, 10th of June, 18th of June. And if you look at the first inning score, so go back to that South African series where my, the mouse is at the moment. West Indies, obviously, remember, got blown away by South Africa's pace attack. Nokia, Rabada, Ngidi, even the spinner Maharaj went ripped for us as well. We were basically blown apart by South Africa and then we got a real reality check um, against the South Africans. And you'll see here, so in the very first test, uh, we made 97 in the first innings. The Safas made 3-2-2. We then replied with 1-6-2. Um, and that was the end of the match. Obviously, we lost by an innings and whatever it was. In the second test, South Africa batted first. They made 298. We made 149 in reply. They made 174. We made 165 and lost by, I don't know, by over 200 runs, or whatever it must have been, or 100 and something runs. The point being, if you take that test match on, those two test matches only, and extrapolate that, we know kind of anecdotally everybody knows that St. Lucia favours um, favors pace. Anecdotally, everybody knows that. And if you go into these test matches, you can see that across seven innings of the test series versus South Africa last year, only one score above 300 was recorded, and that was barely over 300. I'm going to deep dive into those test, uh, those test innings and those two test matches in a minute. But even if we go back two years, 
just uh, prior to about, what, seven, eight months before COVID came, when England came to St. Lucia in that one test match that they won. Remember, we won that series 2-1. Uh, you'll see in that test match, England made 2-7-7 in the first innings. Um, we made 1-5-4 in reply. England made 3-6-1 for five declared, and we made 2-5-2. Now, obviously, England made 3-6-1 for five declared, so that tells you can bat on this track. But again, it's not too many scores over 300. You go back another year when we drew against Sri Lanka um, in St. Lucia. And again, you'll see here, follow my mouse, Sri Lanka 2-5-3 in the first innings, West Indies 300 in reply, Sri Lanka 3-4-2, West Indies 1-4-7 for five drawn test match so on in a nutshell i'm not here to do some massive statistical deep dive here but just in a nutshell it's to show you that there haven't been too many 300 plus scores we are not expecting saint lucia to be any kind of batting paradise against bangladesh i would suggest more often than not that in saint lucia generally speaking you ideally want to bat first and take advantage of um, well, unless it's green, ideally you'd probably want to bat first um, in St. Lucia. If we go back to that last test, uh, let's just go into it. Hopefully my screen still shares. Let's hope the internet's gone down. So here you go. If you go into that last test, you'll see this was the very last test played in St. Lucia this time last year. Um, and you'll see in South Africa's first innings, just in terms of showing you who took wickets. So Roach, three for 45, Gabriel, two for 65. Seals one for 44, Hold one for 47, Mayers three for 28. I'm fully expecting Mayers to come into his own uh, against Bangladesh in the second test. You go down to South Africa, their wicket takers, well, everyone took wickets. Rabada two for 24, Ngidi two for 27, Norkir one for 41, uh, Maharaj two for 47, Mulder. <laughs> Mulder three wickets for one run, right? Okay, so Maharaj took two wickets. So out of the first 20 wickets in the test match, two went to spin. Third, uh, was that? Yeah, uh, what am I doing? Yeah, South Africa's second innings. Again, wicket spread, Roach four for 52, Seals one for 34, Mayers three for 24, Holder one for 24, and Craig Braffrate with one wicket with his dibbly doublers. Again, notice that Mayers, what took, was it six? Six, well, let me just go back. Mayers took six wickets across the match. I'm expecting Mayers to terrorise Bangladesh in this test match. And then again, when we got blown away for one for 65, note that Maharaj did take five for 36 in the second inning. So it's not as straight. This is why I wanted to click on this. It's not as straightforward as just saying, oh, this is going to just be a seam as paradise. I swear this was the test match where Maharaj took a hat trick. Was it that? Let me just check. Yeah, it was. You can see there, Kieran Powell, 107 for four, Holder, 107 for five, De Silva, 107 for six. Maharaj took a hat-trick um, in that test match as well. So just bear in mind that Maharaj did take five for 36. So it's not as straightforward as just saying it's going to be a seam as paradise. Let me just stop sharing this for a while. So to go back to the screen. Hopefully that just helps people, given a bit of kind of st statistical, a very basic statistical overstanding of... Um, St. Lucia and what we can expect um, within St. Lucia. It should favor uh, it should favor pace. It should favor Carl Mayer's um kind of effective, what I call effective wily seam bowling, the fact that Mayers can get movement in both directions um with just a bit of nibble off the seam. I think it will favor Mayers quite heavily. Um Bangladesh obviously have spinners in their mitts. I would be surprised if Bangladesh play more than two spinners. So what, maybe Mahedi and then obviously Shakib to back it up. Um, but West Indies will have a decision to make about how heavily do they go in with spin. So when I looked at the makeup of the sides, I thought there are only four possible lineups West Indies can go for. Remember, if you haven't seen the news, it is the exact same squad. So that's the 11. Uh, this is the 11. So this is the 11 that started the test match in the first test match versus Bangladesh. Brathwaite, Campbell, Reefer, Bonner, Blackwood, Mayers, De Silva, Joseph, Multi, Roach and Seals. I think Roach actually batted ahead of Multi, right? That was the 11 that played the first test. So all of them are in the squad and the extra, the extra two players are Devon Thomas and Anderson Phillip. So the first thing that people have to understand is this. More than likely, if it was me, no, sorry, no, not if it was me, more than likely, my opinion is that they're going to go with the exact same 11, which is the 11 you see see on the screen right now. I find it very hard to believe 
that there is any justification to drop any of the 11. Okay. And the reason, the obvious reason why they won. More often than not, you don't break up a winning side, particularly in a two match test series. There is no kind of need to experiment. It's not like it's a three match test series where you can bring someone in and you've already won two, or they'll remember points and percentage points are on the line. So it's not a simple we shouldn't get drawn into the simplicity of going, oh, we want to win the series. Yes, we do. But remember, the percentage points for the World Test Championship are actually more important than actually thinking about winning the series. So even with that in mind, is there really uh, an argument to say change the side? Of course, the flip side to that is you pick your side according to the conditions. So whether West Indies won this match or not, you should be picking your side according to what's the best team for the actual conditions in St. Lucia. I'm well aware that there was a press conference with Kimar Roach today. I apologise. I haven't actually listened to it yet. I will probably take a listen to that before I go to bed and I'll post about it tomorrow morning, send it, um, send the updates to patrons, etc. But chances are this is the team we go with and we don't have any changes. But what I have done is I've is I've looked at three other possible lineups that they could experiment with if they think there should be some changes. So this is option number two that I'm going to go with. Option number two is they go with this side. You'll notice if you look at closely, there's no changes to the team. All that's changed is where Raymond Reefer is batting. So option two is no changes. Sorry, let's go back again. Option one is just same team, everyone in the same batting position, no changes. Option two is same team. The only change is the batting order. And you'll note that I've put Bonner at three, Blackwood at four, Reefer at five. I full well know that Increment Bonner doesn't want to bat three. But this just goes back to what I said in the um, review of the first test match. I do not agree with the idea of putting, it's not even an idea, it's happened. I do not agree with letting Raymond Reefer play a test match at number three. He's, to me, he's barely a regional number three, let alone putting him at the highest level in test match cricket. He's back in the side because Jason Holt has been, has requested to be rested, right? Not that I'm saying he should be in the team to replace Jason's position like for like, but I just feel that it's not the right thing to do. It's almost setting Raymond Reefer up to fail by asking him to bat at number three. I suspect they won't move his batting order because that would be like an admission of getting it wrong with well, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. But I suspect they won't change the batting order, but this is just an option that you keep the same side, but just change the order around, protect Reefer a bit more and give him, don't expose him so early. And this is my, ultimately, this is my argument. Say Brathwaite or Campbell get out in the first five overs. Are you really saying to me that Raymond Reefer is the number three batsman that you would want to come in within the first five overs when you have the option of Nkrumah Bonner or Jermaine Blackwood? I, I, remember, and remember, Blackwood opened in Sri Lanka when Solazano got injured. So that already tells you that you consider Blackwood someone who can come in and negotiate the new ball. That already tells me that, right? I already told people in the review of the first te test and in the preview to the first test, Blackwood bats number three for Jamaica. So he's used to batting in the top three. Bonner has batted number three for West Indies. So I'm just perplexed by this notion that Raymond Reefer comes into the side after a long-awaited chance, to, uh, after a long-awaited period of to get another chance, and you put him at number three. It just smacks of setting up to fail. So there's a, uh, I guess my theory is, same team, put him lower down the order and just rejig the batting lineup. Who knows? They might do that. I doubt it. Option three, drop reefer. So in this option, you drop reefer. I don't agree with this, but I'm just giving you the options. In this option, you drop reefer. You bring in Devon Thomas. Thomas goes in at number five because there is no way on earth you would put Devon Thomas um, and with his aggressive brand of cricket and let him bat at number three. But in the same way how you, would, you wouldn't do that to Devon Thomas, why would you do it to Raymond Reefer? The, the, yes, I know reefer batted three for Barbados, but I just don't get it so there's an option that you keep the same team but thomas comes in and you say you know what reefer you've got 11 and you've got two you're out they shouldn't do that because if they're putting him at number three surely you've got to give him the whole series at number three to prove he can do it but i'm just saying that's another option that you bring in devon remember devon thomas also offers a bit of a bowling option as does reefer um and yeah, you drop Reefer. I don't agree with this team per se, but it's just an option. You'll notice so far in my first three teams, there's no changes to the bowling lineup. 
The only change I've got to the bowling lineup is if you pick team number four. So in team number four, Reef is back in my side and the batting lineup stays the exact same. The only change I've got for team number four is Multi's out and Philip comes in. Why? Because if they look at that St. Lucia deck, and if that St. Lucia deck has like a green tinge like Antigua had, which you know will already play havoc with the Bangladesh batters' minds if they just come and they see, boy, West Indies have prepared another green top. This is peak for us. Well, in that case, you might as well play the extra seamer and you bring in Anderson Phillip. And in that case, then, you're, 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 what am I trying to say here? And if you do that, look how many options you've got. You've got Joseph, Roach, Phillip, Seals, Mayers. Five seamers who will terrorise the Bangladesh batters. So if that deck is green and they've done what they did in Antigua and they do it in St. Lucia, where we know there's a history of fast bowlers um, succeeding in St. Lucia of recent time, well, you bring in Anderson Phillip then and let him get some fun and joy in terrorising because he would be obviously very quick and get some fun and joy with terrorising the Bangladesh batters as well. I'm not sure what, how I feel about this side. I'm just saying it's an option. The other reason why I'm not sure about this side is if you drop Moti, even if we're saying that Bangladesh, sorry, St. Lucia favours pace, that's why I wanted to show you a lot at the top of the video what happened the last time he played there with South Africa. Maharaj picked up how much was it across the match? Sorry, let me just go back. So five in the second innings. How many did he pick up in the first? And two in the first. So Maharaj picked up seven wickets in St. Lucia the last time he played there, the South African spinner, right? Um, so there is an argument to say, did we even play a spinner? One second. We didn't even play a... Sp oh, Roston chased. Anyways, um... <laughs> There, there is an argument to say if Maharaj can pick up seven, and yes, you could say that's part the part of that is down to West Indies brittle batting, but there's an argument to say that you have to play a spinner then in in St. Lucia, and that to go in without a frontline spinner would be a mistake. I just worry that we could go in with Multi into this test match. Mayers, Roach, Joseph, and Seals wreak havoc, and Multi ends up just bowling hardly any overs, which then seems like a bit of a wasted spot. The question you have to ask yourself is, do West Indies believe that Craig Brathwaite and Nkrumah Bonner are, in, are good enough part-timers to not need a frontline spinner? Like I say, I don't know where I stand with this fourth, this fourth side or this fourth possible notion of a side, but uh, this side all depends on what the deck's saying. Listen, that's it, you know. A quick... <laughs> A quick 25 minutes just looking at the options. So I've given you four teams, people. Get in the comments below. Get in the comments below. Obviously, if you haven't already done so and you're still watching this video, like the video, subscribe to the video. I should always say that at the start. I always forget to say it. Like the video, subscribe to the video, and share it. Share it Share it with people. And um, say, you know what? You know what? No one's doing West Indies cricket justice like Caribbean Cricket Podcasts are doing West Indies Cricket Justice. And before I forget, because I'm recording this as it just happened, Big Up Barbados, they've just defeated uh, Trinidad and Tobago women to reach the Super 50 Cup Final. So Big Up uh, Barbados women who are now in the Super 50 Cup Final, they will play the winners of Jamaica versus Guyana. So I should just say that because I was just watching that before I press record on that. So people, get into the comments. Let me know your views. So let me show you again. Team 1, no change. Team 2, no change except changing Raymond Reefer's uh, batting position. Team three, drop Reefer and bring in Thomas. Team four, drop Moti and bring in Philip with no other changes. So that's the four options I'm giving you, people. Which one would you go with? Me personally, I'm going with team one. It's not necessarily what I want to happen, but it's what I think probably should happen, which is the exact same team. Uh, you let them all go again. They won the first test match. You trust that the fast bowlers and Mayers and Multi can do their thing. And you just have to trust that the batters will come stronger. And it won't just rely on Brathwaite, who made the runs last time, Brathwaite, Campbell and Blackwood. And that all of the rest of the batters will, 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 will show up as and when they are needed. So let me know in the comments below what you think, people. That's been a really quick kind of preview video ahead of the second test. Share this with who you need to share it with. Share the Caribbean podcast with your friends and your family. Thank you for listening. That's been another episode of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Thank you and good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules.
Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. 